Hello and welcome to the appointment. I'm Pranjal Sharma. Joining me for a conversation today is Shashi Kiran Shetty, who is the founder and chairman of All Cargo Logistics, which is one of the biggest uh, logistics companies in the country and has a global footprint. Shashi, thanks very much for being with us. You're welcome, Pranjal. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Shashi, you built a fantastic uh, empire, I would say, in logistics and done it very quietly over the last uh, uh, two decades or so. Um, give us a, a little bit of a history of uh, All Cargo. Now I know you have a global footprint, yeah. but we'll discuss that later. But tell us about the origins of your company. Yeah. You know, I started uh, my uh, entire career in a very humble way. I moved to Bombay when I was 21 years old and worked four years for a shipping agency company in Mumbai. And uh, uh, something about the uh, entrepreneur bug or something was telling me that I should be doing much more than what uh, I was doing in those days. So I was looking for opportunity. I was only 25 years old and um, um, in the four years of experience working in the shipping industry I made some very good friends and I consulted a few of them. What is that I should be doing? And uh, a friend of mine said that why don't you start uh, a forklift business and uh, also business uh, to handle ships in the port of Mumbai which used to be very heavily congested in those days. Uh, you know the reason that he mentioned that also because uh, uh, it is also always good to have somebody who understands the shipping business who is on the other side of the fence. Uh, so it appealed to me and uh, obviously I didn't have the capital I, I had very little amount of money and uh, I thought that, you know, this is something I think I should take a plunge. This is the time. I went and met few of the uh, uh, vendors of uh, the company where I used to work for and made an, a kind of an informal agreement with them that if I start the internal trucking and handling of the ships in the port of Mumbai, would you support me? So I spoke to four or five of them and they said, you know, they had a, we had built a good relationship and I knew them well. They said, uh, look, I think we will be there for you. So that gave me a bit of a confidence. And also it so happened that few of the boys from my native uh, town, Mangalore city, also had moved into Bombay and they've been working there. And uh, very young guys, younger than me. And I told them, guys, would you like to join me? <laughs> so they said, uh, yeah, if you are there, we will follow you. So from a professional you would become an employer already? Yes, already. <laughs> so I made these arrangements from both sides, uh, three sides actually. I spoke to my potential customers. They said they were willing to consider giving me work. I spoke to the suppliers whether they were willing to back me and I spoke to the young boys whether they were willing to join me. So it all worked out and uh, that's how I started. Uh, and. Uh, the, everybody supported me you know I've been very thankful to all of them. All the commitments I think it was built on relationships. Relationship. Absolutely. So that was perhaps one of your core strengths. Yes even today you know that is one of the core value and core of my uh, individuality and you know I don't normally uh, burn bridges you know I, I because that's st so strong in me right from my younger days even when I was in the college I used to have some very very good friends and uh, you know, friendship for me was those days has always been that I am there for you in a real sense. Uh, you know, we used to have uh, uh, in the colleges, we used to have in those days, you know, two, two different groups and, uh, you know, those kind of a, uh, college day clashes used to happen and we used to stand by each other. But so, is, in, in management situation yes. or when you're running a business, is there sometimes a clash of a relationship uh, friendship and yeah. professionalism? I think in business eventually, you know, as you get matured, as you uh, really experience the real world of business, I think sometimes you'll have to leave some people behind. Uh, leave people behind in terms of competence and willingness to learn, willingness to uh, take those uh, challenges and uh, the energy and the, and, the, and, the, and the ambition itself. If those things are not there, competency is the other factor. If these things are not there, then you know you you need to then change the gear and uh, get more competent people, and you know have these guys do what they are good at. 
right so it's a combination of competence as well as relationship that you have to yeah. always find the right balance absolutely right absolutely right is that difficult for you to do uh, hard sometimes it is hard uh, you know bring in new people and get them into the mainstream uh, while taking care of the existing people who've been so loyal and who've been so supportive uh, but i think you know life has to go on as long as it is dealt in a proper way communicated to people over a period of time give the others the opportunity to uh, demonstrate what is required and and if that doesn't come through then obviously i think everybody understands that because nobody wants end of the day um, the company losing out true because you know you've also grown uh, individually and your group uh, all cargo has grown yeah. at a very rapid pace yeah it's sometimes difficult for people to keep up with that pace because at every level yes. of growth the needs of the organization change yes you know for me also what happened is uh, as the company was growing and expanding and we created multiple verticals with the business you know some of the leadership grown in that vertical while the other vertical we completely brought people from different uh, uh, experience and competency and you know education and all that uh, and when we grew internationally that was fairly easy because you know you uh, you you have the management team coming from different parts of the world which is required you cannot be exporting indian management to uh, do business in uh, say belgium for example or germany for example because there you need the local language uh, skills skills are required you need the uh, local cultural understanding that is required and in many parts of the world there are a lot of allegiance to same uh, culture of people to do business with so you have to take into account so many different aspects cultural requirements and the market requirements and the you know the uh, the skills requirement and all that stuff right what what has been perhaps in well you know these more than two decades of all cargo yeah was there any time when you felt really disappointed that things are not going the way that you want to after you launched and you had initial success thanks to those commitments and relationships yeah did you at some point doubt your decision to become an entrepreneur never i never had to uh, worry about uh, the decisions that i made of course there are little smaller setbacks that happens to every individual because i am not perfect myself right i mean we all make mistakes and none of these things are taught in the university so it is always um, you know you make mistakes and learn as long as the mistakes are not disastrous i am very happy to make mistake and i made plenty of mistakes and my people make plenty of mistakes and i accept it i tell them don't hesitate to make mistake make mistakes learn but don't remain static and don't repeat the mistake don't repeat the mistake of course yeah <laughs> but yeah. the point of listing of your company that could have been a important milestone for you how yes. did that uh, when did you arrive and how did you arrive at that decision first we got in a private equity investor uh, when we acquired uh, equiline in belgium um so the p- idea was that i don't wanted to overexpose my company to buy something which is so big uh compared to my company at that time right and i had no experience of managing a international company so i wanted to kind of a play very safe so i sold a small equity about 6% of my shares and bought 33% of equiline and then we within the one next one year after getting a little bit better sense of the company then we decided to increase the shares